meet Kaida. She just turned 19. In his free time, Kaida likes drawing, playing online games, and solving math problems. Kaida has trouble communicating and interacting with his peers. He feels disoriented by social encounters. In public spaces, he often speaks too loudly, and Kaida obsesses over details. This can be good and bad. He prefers carrying out all of his conversations via email so that he can hold others accountable. But that also means he creates amazing artwork and does everything with meticulous care. Kaida is my brother, and he's an integral part of my life. Kaida can make my life and my parents' lives messy and crazy, but I wouldn't want to trade it for anything else. Growing up, I always knew Kaida was different. Kaida was a weird, nerdy kid who won math and chess competitions. His friends respected him for his intelligence and kindness. At the same time, my brother had a hard time in school and did not always pay attention in class. His teachers would often come to me and ask me to write down his homework, even though I was a younger sibling. Everyone knew who he was, and by extension, who I was. As a result, I grew up thinking of myself as Kaida's sister rather than Linda. When I was eight and when Kaida was 10, our family moved from China to America. Here, Kaida was just weird. In addition to facing a cultural and language barrier, Kaida would often do things that fell outside the norm of socially accepted behavior, like lying down on the sidewalk or sitting on the school bus. Needless to say, he had a hard time making friends. I would often get curious questions from his classmates. In my mind, there were two Kaidas. The Kaida that was branded and excluded by his peers and the brother I knew. Even though the scrutiny was directed at Kaida, for the first time, I felt by extension the ostracization and stigma that surrounds mental disabilities. Later on, during our first year in America, Kaida was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. For those who don't know, Asperger's syndrome is a high functioning form of autism. Similar to other forms, it impairs the basic social skills when it's expected to display. While the diagnosis concerned Kaida, it also impacted my parents and me. All of a sudden, I remember feeling more conscious about my brother being different and becoming resentful about this fact. My parents began to dedicate almost all of their attention on Kaida. As an eight-year-old, I felt overshadowed and I hated that I was never the center of attention. If my family were a solar system, Kaida was the sun. My mom also got worried about my brother not having friends, so whenever my friends came over for a play date, she would abduct them and ask that my brother be included in whatever we were doing. I also felt myself slowly becoming a surrogate parent to him. All of a sudden, it felt like Kaida's differences took away my friends, my parents' attention, and dominated almost every aspect of my family life. For a long time, I saw my brother's autistic behaviors as undesirable and made it my goal to teach him socially acceptable behaviors and somehow fix him. Like mental illnesses, autism is less visible. Having an autistic brother is not something that I have publicized in the past. I wish I had always had the courage to speak about this but it took a long time for me to overcome my own prejudice and fear. My brother was never bullied at school, but he was judged, shunned, and excluded. In restaurants, we would often turn heads. I was resentful. I felt powerless to make things better, and I blamed Kaida rather than the perpetrators of his suffering. When I voiced these feelings to my mom, she got very upset, and. This is what she told me. If you feel ashamed of your brother, you should be ashamed of yourself. That was my wake up call. It's not Kaida's fault for being different. Looking back, I realized that my feelings of resentment stem from my own inability to value and recognize Kaida's neurodivergence. 
people, including myself, bypass and misunderstood Kaida because his mind doesn't fit in society's definition of normal. I hope to challenge you to think about the value that neurological difference or neurodiversity can actually bring to our view of the world. So what's autism in a nutshell? It's actually a spectrum of disorders. The autism spectrum is a group of developmental disorders which includes a wide range of symptoms and skills. The Centers for Disease Control currently estimates that one in 68 school-aged children in America are on the autism spectrum, and this occurs in all socioeconomic, racial, and ethnic groups. Some of the classic signs of autism include difficulty interacting and communicating with others, limited interest or activities, and repetitive behaviors. This can mean inability to speak, a sensitivity to physical contact, or even the fixation on spinning objects. One of the ways that I like to think about autism as, is as a spectrum, as Temple Grandin writes in her books. Like depression and other disorders, autism is on a continuum ranging from normal to abnormal. Too much of a trait can pose difficult challenges, but a little bit can provide an advantage. Compared with those affected by other forms of ASD, those with Asperger's syndrome do not experience significant delays in language and cognitive development. Some even have a high level vocabulary, often in a specialized field of interest. We might think that if all genetic brain disorders were eliminated, we might be happier, but there would be a terrible price. At one end of the spectrum, you might find someone who faces severe challenges, but at the other end, you might find an Einstein or even a Steve Jobs, both of whom have been speculated to exhibit traits associated with autism. And that's where the idea of neurodiversity comes in. Neurodiversity is a concept that neurological differences should be recognized and respected as any other human variation. Neurodiversity is not li limited to autism. In fact, it can include those labeled with dyslexia, ADHD, and others. Those who are not on the autism spectrum are referred to as NTs or neurotypical. NTs are wired differently than those with AS and usually have developed the social skills that the AS person lacks. And most importantly, neurodiversity is the idea that neurological differences should be regarded as distinctive strengths rather than mere checklists of deficits and dysfunctions. And unlocking those hidden strengths is in the interest of every single one of us. The autistic mind differs in the way it attends to details, categorizes sensory information, and uses non-standard ways of learning and approaching problem solving. Many people who are on the autistic spectrum are simultaneously gifted at tasks requiring food intelligence but disabled when it comes to tasks requiring social skills. This can mean learning calculus, which is considered as a difficult task with relative ease, but struggling with executive functioning. Some people on the autistic spectrum also engage in deeply focused thinking in specific areas. These narrow but deep special interests can be anything from physics to ballet, from doorknobs to math, and from politics to shiny bits of paper. Rather than thinking of these mental differences as deficits, we can envision them as differences in cognitive functioning, just like we would biological or cultural diversity. We can think of autism as a variation in human wiring rather than a disease. The concept of neurodiversity allows us to account for the unique strengths and weaknesses that come with individual neurological difference. According to the Harvard Business Review, Many people on the autistic spectrum have higher than average abilities. Some conditions, including dyslexia and autism, are associated with superior skills in memory, pattern recognition, and mathematics. And these are talents that are highly sought after by employers. For instance, dyslexics have strong entrepreneurial skills. Those with ADHD thrive in novel learning situations. 
In fact, Mozart and Tesla would probably both be diagnosed as autism spectrum today. Steve Silberman wrote in his book Neurotribes about a supervisor at Microsoft whose top debuggers all have Asperger's syndrome. Why? They can visualize hundreds of lines of code in their head as a visual image. They look for the discrepancies in, pat in the pattern and that's where the bugs are. We often think of acceptance as a value that forces some sort of compromise on the high standards we set for ourselves. However, it's really not a you win, I win situation. We both gain from it. Acceptance is not only a positive skill to exercise, but it also serves as a competitive advantage. In fact, inclusion and acceptance should raise, not lower, the standards we set for ourselves and others. While neurodiverse people do require special accommodations, have struggles communicating, and often have challenging eccentricities. For many organizations, the benefits have outweighed the cost. Studies have shown that companies with programs recruiting neurodiverse talent, including SAP, have seen boosts in productivity, innovative capabilities, and employee engagement. And neurodiversity drives innovation. Because neurodiverse people are wired differently than those who are neurotypical, they bring new perspectives to a company's efforts to create and recognize value. Preliminary results from Hewlett Packard South Pacific show that the company's neurodiverse testing teams are 30% more productive than the others. Temple Grandin once said, if autism had been eradicated from the face of the earth, then men would still be socializing in front of a wood fire at the entrance to a cave. However, stigma is a real problem with real consequences. For many who are on the spectrum, the hardest step is getting in that front door. Many autistic adults are not exercising the strengths of their atypical minds at companies like Apple and Google. Instead, a disproportionate number is unemployed and struggling to get by on disability payments. Think about what effects this has on our economy. Right now, there is an enormous untapped talent pool. So what's the big takeaway from all of this? I want you to think that some types of intelligence are not worth more than others, nor is there only one right way to think. As Temple Grandin has often said, our world needs different kinds of minds to work together. This is what I found. The pain and joy that I have experienced in growing up with my brother have led to tremendous learning and growth. And more than anything, it taught me that different is good. I know it can be hard to interact with someone who is on the autistic spectrum. Trust me, even though I love my brother, he's a pain 75% of the time. And every few days, I think about throwing him out the window. Well, no, just kidding. But getting past the initial fear is the hardest part. But don't let that tough exterior prevent you from getting to know someone awesome. So at this point, you're probably wondering, how do I fit into all of this? Chances are, you know, or perhaps you're even friends with someone who is on the spectrum. You have a role in making a difference. We can all start by changing our mindset and changing the way we talk about neurological difference. So here's my challenge to you. Let's create a better world where we value neurodiversity as much as we value cultural or racial diversity, so that anyone on the autistic spectrum can feel accepted and embraced rather than ashamed. Autism should not define who my brother is. Let's think of neurological difference not as a disability, a source of stigma, but rather as a way to live life differently. Thank you.